This beautiful wall tapestry was created nearly 40 years ago and installed in this home in View Park, California. It was created by artist Keith Collins. I'm Michael Real, and this is Real Urban News. We speak with the artist exclusively. Keith, what, what are we calling this masterpiece? Well, it's a tapestry, and the concept is freeform. So it allows the wall to become part of the piece. It's all handmade. It's made from pieces of carpet, like a mosaic or a puzzle. And then it's installed with a staple gun, so you don't see any evidence of hardware. Take us back to the vision when you came up with this concept. Well, um, Dr. Larry and Mamie Strong, the original owners, commissioned this piece. And this piece was designed by Melinda Weathersby. She was um, an incredible, well, she is still an incredible designer. She did the illustration and, and the line drawing. Uh, I presented it to Larry and Mamie and they loved it. So that's the beginning part of it. Once they approved the design, the line drawing and the colors, then I would show texture, materials and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And this was done, I don't know if I mentioned that, but it was done like a circa 1975, 76. And it's an early piece of mine, and I'm, I'm glad to see it stood the test of time. What do you call it? Freeform tapestry. Uh -huh. This concept is based on a bonsai tree. Okay. And the whole point was that we wanted to cover two walls, so you can see it's creased in the middle, going in two directions, and allowing this wall. At the time, this fresh paper was put up, mm -hmm. kind of a rice paper. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And we did a border thing across the bottom of it all. And this is all carpet. It's all carpet, yeah. So this, this room obviously is wall-to-wall -wall carpet. Right. But right. this actual installation, Right. this is carpet. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. And pieces, this is uh, pieces of carpet, like, like, like I said earlier, a mosaic or a mm -hmm. jigsaw puzzle. Or a quilt. The concept's the same, yeah. Mm -hmm. And how did you come up with this? Well, I didn't oh. come up with it. My, I had an aunt, her name was Mabel Collins, mm -hmm. who, and she, um, was one of uh, several creative folks in my family and she was doing carpets from pieces that you'd buy at a carpet store like squares and whatnot and I moved into my first apartment in college I asked her to make me one and she said well you can make it yourself I'll show you how mm -hmm. and I did I, I, I began to take what she taught me and uh, just kind of move on it but she's the one behind the, the initial phase of this whole thing the designs changed technique has changed and now I'm into my 50th year of doing this full time. What kind of time mm -hmm. and commitment right. goes into this level mm -hmm. of creative artwork? Well, the time is based on a detail. So there's some pieces that are a little more uh, detailed than others, requiring more time. As far as dedication, commitment, I don't look at it like that. I just look at whatever I do, I'm all in. So I never said I'm going to be really committed to this. I just, if I, when I recall, there weren't any options in my head. I said, this is a hit, this is gonna work. And it was a lot of peaks and valleys early on, and still are, but it has taken me uh, across uh, water, across continents, all over Europe and Japan. I work in museums throughout the world, as well as some great private collections. Mm -hmm. I like to say that my clientele ranges from gangsters to royalty, literally. Mm -hmm. And uh, both of that answers your question. How do people hear about you? How do they find out about because this is almost top secret. We've seen it mm -hmm. over the years, mm -hmm. but how does one find out about an artist like yourself? Well, a lot of a lot of my clientele is based on word of mouth. I'll do an occasional show, uh, an exhibit. Like I just finished one in Monterey, California, at Pebble Beach, and that's an annual event I do. The main thing is, folks travel in circles and love art and love this kind of art, and they see somebody else with it, and it moves them. So that's the best form of advertisement. And this is withstood, as we said already, the test of time. We mm -hmm. see the classic uh, bail telephone mm -hmm. here in this dial, room. Dial, dial phone. Dial phone. Yeah. But this artwork has remained. Right. And so we know phones of a, a dial phone has right. been gone a long time. Right, 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 right. Um, it's, a, it's a testimony to the, to first of all, the, the original owners that commissioned it, um, Dr. Larry and Mamie Strawn. And it's, this home has remained in their family. 
uh, I think maybe passed the last of the two to, to pass. She passed about four years ago. So you're talking about a home that's remained in the family. The children now own the home. Mm -hmm. And so it's an honor to be here and to, to, to go back in time. Because I can flash back and I can see them. I can see myself talking to them. And I can see myself discussing it with them, mm -hmm. listening to their response. And also when it was up, just their response. Mm -hmm. It's very special being here. Take us back. Well, uh, they wanted something special. And uh, I assured them they get something special. It's very, it's pretty simple like that. And um, they've enjoyed, they enjoyed it for many, many years. And I enjoy doing it for them. I really enjoy this too. And uh, a different time, uh, that's a long time ago. Does that come out to be like, what, uh, 46 years ago or so? Mm -hmm. Approximately, yeah. This is craftsmanship. I think so. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think so. What's the value on something like this today? Today, knowing that it was created right, nearly forty years like ago, right? Like this is about twenty thousand dollars today. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you commissioned, you were commissioned to do this. Mm -hmm. At what range in terms of finance? I think that we just—I don't recall the exact figure, but we sure. discussed that mm -hmm. and came to an agreement, and I made it. Are you surprised that it's still here and still standing? No, mm -hmm. I'm not. Uh, as long as it, as long as the home had remained the family, I'm not surprised at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No. How many houses across Southern California mm -hmm. have you been able to install this level of wall-to-wall -wall mm -hmm. artwork, tapestry? Right, right, right. In Southern California? Yes, sir. I probably would say uh, 75, mm -hmm. 80 homes in Southern California. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then your work is taking you around the world. Oh, yeah. I have work in museums. Uh, in in Japan, Gotemba, Japan, Bern, Switzerland, um, various parts of, of of Europe as well as South America, Canada. So um, it's just so a a, a, a patron or a, a, a someone who enjoys this level of work. Right. They reach out to you. They contact you. Right. Right. And then, or I'll seek them out. Okay. You know, I, I had a goal in the early 70s to get three clients. I wanted Michael Jackson to be a client. I wanted Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan. Okay. I got two out of three. Okay. I spent a lot of time with Michael in the 80s. Which Michael? Michael, ja Michael Jackson. Okay. A lot of time, personal time with him. <laughs> and uh, he commissioned probably 13, 14 pieces. As well as it got to the point where he's like, whatever you do, I buy it. You know? And then uh, I just worked for Magic too. Okay. I hadn't quite got to Michael. But that, those are my goals at the time. Uh -huh. But now, I mean, there's a lot of folks you may not recognize in the corporate world, you know, because I do a lot of commercial work as well. I paint also, do oil paintings, I do uh, assemblage, I do um, sculptures. So the creative process and the creative field is wide open. And I like texture. Sure. So everything I have has some degree of texture, as you'll see. Okay. Walk us back through with, with your time with Michael Jackson. Okay, well, I, I had a, he had a bodyguard, head of security named Bill Bray, who was his head of security. Okay. On the videos, you might see him, he has like a little Sherlock Holmes type of hat on, he's always in there, and he might be running in the video. Anyway, so I, I got in contact with him, and I got his phone number. They were based in Century City at the time, his office was. Okay. And I called him, and I kept calling him, he never called me back. So I said, you know what, forget this. I said, I'm going to do something to get his attention. So at the time, Michael had the Neverland a Value logo, which is a little boy on a moon. I made the tapestry. Sure. And so I went to his office with my guys, and we stood out in the hall in front of these like 15 foot doors and had it on a display rack. And I walked inside and I said, I'm here to see Bill Bray. And they said, Is, uh, is he expecting you? I said, Yes. <laughs> so Bill comes out, Keith, Keith, I was going to call you. I said, Bill. You weren't calling me. I've tried to get you 30 times, uh -huh. but I got something to show you, okay? He said, all right, man, show it to me. So we opened the double doors, bam, and there it was. He goes, oh, Mike's got to see this. Uh -huh. 10 minutes later, I was with Michael Jackson here in a studio in Ventura. It was just me and him, and he just said, I just, I love your work. Your mom should be really proud of you, and I want to get this for Janet, and I want this, this, and this. That's how that happened. And over the years, I did a lot of, a lot of work for him. Met, I met, met with him personally two times. Mm -hmm. But the first meeting was just me and him one-on-one. -on -one. Most creative person I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. When I left, the, when I walked away after shaking his hand, I could feel the creativity banging off my back. Mm -hmm. Incredibly creative person. Yeah. And here we are. Mm -hmm. You've been able to walk with kings and not lose your common touch. No, no, no. Because the real king is God and mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. I'm, you know. You're a vessel. Yeah, I am. But I, I'm, I'm like... 
I, I think it's an honor to be given a creative gift because the ultimate creation is this universe and galaxies and solar system. You know, so I think it's a wonderful compliment to have a little piece of that. Tell us about the responsibility that accompanies this level of artwork and working with global clients and global museums and global brands. Well, I believe the responsibility to deliver on time and quality and do the best I can. And I just, I always do the best I can no matter what. There was a story one time I was doing a show in Newport Beach and a, a tapestry fell on a guy and he sued me. And come to find out he was, that was, he was a habit of doing that. And he was a professional sewer person, whatever. And so his attorney called me and said, here's the deal. I told my attorney, he said, we can fight it. It's gonna cost you 40,000 to fight it. You'll beat it because of his history. So I said, I said, but he made an offer. So I, he said, oh, I said, what's the offer? He said, if you'll make him a rug, he'll drop, the, drop it. And he, he gave me a design, and the trip about it is, I couldn't make a bad rug. Even for that dude who was wrong, illegal, and just, just wrong. I still had to give, I still had to give my best. And that taught me something about myself. It was, it's a good thing. So even in, even when someone was wrong, doing you wrong, I still had to live my best. So that's what I was saying. I want to live my best, I want them happy, and I want it in a timely fashion, as they do. Would. Tell us about the value that this level of artwork for Mr. Collins adds to this dynamic home. Well, as you know, um, most of the homes in View Park were constructed sometime between the 1920s and the 1970s. This house is a 1950s, mm -hmm. a mid-century. It's one of the most desirable styles of home. Mm -hmm. And those buyers that purchase a home like this want the authenticity preserved. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that are both unique and authentic is Keith Collins' work. There is no other home, and I've sold you know, hundreds of homes in this neighborhood, that I have seen that has this kind of installation in it. And so everybody comes in, and the first thing they remark on is his work. Mm -hmm. And I always try and remind them, I'm selling the house, mm -hmm. not the art. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what it adds, is it's unique, it's, it's authentic to the time period, and it's rep reflective of an artist that is from this area, so mm -hmm. that's very important. And a home buyer, a level of home like this would hold on to this and keep this in the house? You know, it's interesting. We have some buyers right now, and that is exactly what they asked me, and I was lucky enough to find King and ask him to consult with them on how they might preserve it while still being able to uh, obviously update the house sure. to current standards. So anybody who spends several million dollars on mm -hmm. a home is going to want some of the newest things on their floor and on their walls. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's a balance, mm -hmm. right? There's mm -hmm. a balance so that you can preserve the artistry, the authenticity, and the value of mm -hmm. what was put here by the family that preceded them. What is it like for you to work with Mr. Collins and to share his vision and to share his his uh, intellect with a potential buyer. So that's a very generous work with Mr. Collins. There's no such thing. He is the master. He is the creator. I'm just lucky enough to meet him. And we had an opportunity for him to talk to the buyers. And it was wonderful because he was really able to convey to them the essence, the value, and really the uniqueness of both the house, the neighborhood, and the art installation within the house. Mm -hmm. You grew up in this neighborhood, View Park. Yeah. How special is this to you to have the opportunity to work with a broker, mm. to speak with potential homeowners where your artwork is installed? Mm. It's precious. It's precious. Uh, yes, I did grow up. My high school years were spent about two minutes from here, and I currently live two blocks from here. As far as working with Teresa, um, I've enjoyed we just met. Uh, I enjoy in any form of fashion how I can help her with this home. Um, I get emotional about my work and about this home and I reflect back on standing in this very room and speaking to Dr. Larry made me strong about the concept. So it's a very emotional time for me, but I enjoy it. I, I bring, I love emotion, I bring it. It's good. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. My pleasure, man. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate Thanks, it. Michael.
There are so many levels to this remarkable and incredible artist, Keith Collins. Our initial conversation, we were talking about an installation, a rug, a wall installation. But we've been fortunate to view his in-home gallery exclusively. This room is special. This home, the items in the home, occupying the home, giving it a voice. This is really a tremendous gallery. Mm -hmm. Talk about these pieces in this room that we're in. All right, well, first of all, I'd like to talk about this tapestry. As my work is made from pieces, you got every color, every section is a piece of carpet, jigsaw puzzled together. The subject matter is John michel Basquiat, African-American artist. He died 27 years old. Up until recently, his work holds the record. His original works hold the record as far as prices in the United States. His recent, most recent piece was around $125 million. And uh, he's incredible. So what I did was combine a portrait of him that was uh, photographed by John Van Der Zee, very famous uh, African-American artist out of the Harlem Renaissance period, black and white photograph, combined with one of his pieces done in tapestry. Mm -hmm. Piece is about 10 feet wide, about seven feet tall. It's made from wool as well as man-made fibers. Mm -hmm. um, this room, uh, all the rooms are special. The, this is an assemblage piece where I combined two African hunting jackets with a sculpture and the crown and the knees bases are uh, haberdashery bases used in the 1910s to put clothes on. So that's that. And I collect vintage uh, lighting as well. This is Sputnik from 1950. Mm -hmm. This house was burnt down to the ground in 2008. And um, one of the pieces that survived was this. Wow. It's been polished now. Mm -hmm. And also this table is a very unique table. It's designed by Paul T. Frankel. It's cork. Mm -hmm. His pieces are very desirable. I made the carpet too on the floor, which is uh, a, again a combination of texture. This piece is also a Franco piece with the cork here. I collect vintage lamps. These are probably some of the rarest lamps you'd find from the 50s. You collect these items. What do we call you? Because you're more than a, just an artist and a collector. What do you call me? Brilliant. Oh, well, thanks for the compliment. But yeah. it's all art to me. It's all art. Uh, the artifacts of the past architecture there's some doors there that are African this is a Japanese raincoat from the Edo period which is like your uh, I believe it's like 1600 that's a couple of hundred years old there um, so I'm a collector I'm an artist but art to me art doesn't have boundaries so to me all this is art and then my family I'm very proud of I have four daughters and my son I have five children and uh, they've been very instrumental very supportive of me as I had been of them. <laughs> so, Alrighty. yeah. So, you you know, I have, I've done maybe a, just a, since the house has been at least in a condition where you can see where it's going, this is, this is like probably my first time I've invited someone to my home, so. It's safe to call you a curator. You wanna be safe? It's safe. Uh -huh. yeah, it's safe. When you hear that word curator, what, what comes to mind? Uh, not only someone that appreciates the art, but someone that, uh, supports the art and that, that and has a high degree of appreciation for art and artifacts. That's what comes to mind for me, as well as managing collections and things of that sort. And not only you're an artist, but yet our conversation, you've been supportive as you point out uh, different artists. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you talk to artists and they have their items, mm -hmm. but you have shared with us tremendous pieces Thank by you. other artists who are just super fabulous. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite artists is Ernie Barnes, who's my mentor. If you're familiar with Ernie Barnes, Ernie Barnes uh, did the Good Time show. They showed his art in there. Sure. He also uh, was an incredible painter. He's, he's a mentor. I spent a lot of time with him, and he taught me about presentation. He said it's not even, it's not really about uh, just the just the art. He said, but it's about the presentation. Mm -hmm. The unveilings and things of that sort. So, talk about this room. This room is very special. Uh, again, my favorite designer, Paul T. Frankel, uh, made this custom sofa. It was a custom sofa, and it was in the, uh, a family, the Dietrich family in Bel Air, built for them in the 1940s. This is a tapestry of my father, Dr. James Collins. And I've never cried when I made pieces before, 
But when I worked on this and my mom, I cried because they had just recently passed. They passed two weeks apart and I couldn't finish them for my mom's celebration, but I was able to finish them for my dad and unveil them there. But I've never cried before in making pieces and I cried for both of these. This is my father. This is captured of him probably circa 1980. He was a radiologist professor and uh, he also invented many process, medical process, especially like the dye they put through your veins to find out what's wrong with you. He invented that. And he was a specialist in that area. Went to Meharry Medical School. In the 60s, you could only go to Meharry or Howard if you were a black person. We lived with them for a couple of years while he was in school. So he's very precious, very precious to me. And uh, I'm honored to have a father like this, Dr. James Douglas Collins. Went to Jefferson High School here wow. in LA. My mom was probably the most supportive Again, the tears, you know, when I worked on this. Most supportive individual of my life. She supported everything. When I was a child, she supported all my little arts and crafts things. She took me to those things. She inspired me. Uh, she always supported me. Everybody, everybody might have laughed at what I was doing at the time early on. And what are you up to now? Another Keith Collins dream. But she never felt that way. And uh, her name, Cecilia Edith Collins, she was known as E.E. -E for Edith. And she's just the, you know, I'm very partial, but she's the best. And everybody knows her, knows she's the best ever mom and grandmother. So this captures her circa 1955. I would have been about a year old. And this photograph comes from a, this capture comes from a photograph of her looking at me as about a one year old in Germany. So again, the tap, she detect, the textures, her favorite color was red. So I really pumped up the red here and, uh, yeah, so I, I actually want to make sure these two got attention. Tell us about this this piece, these pieces. These three pieces. This one, this one, and this one are some of my Austin Blige pieces. What I what do you call it? Austin Blige. It's a, it's a term for assemblage art. So I combine metal. I have a, a part of a deco railing system from the 1940s. Uh, also, uh, this is a Jaray sculpture. I combine it with an African headdress as well as African doors. So I'm doing a series of doors. So these are the uh, first three of my door series, as well as this. So this can be hung in a horizontal position or also vertical. But again, the door concept, each piece has a part of a door in it. So you see the door here? Yes. And this is a African hunting jacket. Uh, this is a, you'll never guess what this is. I'll tell you so you don't have to worry about it. But this is a street cleaning brush. But it had the look I wanted to be circular and work with this, balance this piece off. Mm -hmm. And then there's another one here. Again, the door concept right here. Mm -hmm. I also am a painter. This is a, uh, a jaclay on canvas of an original painting I did for a very dear friend of mine and client, Ray Shear. And there were two versions of He's He lives in Malibu. So we did like a north and south from his house. This is one view of the north from out his house. This is Malibu here. And the original was larger than this by about two feet either way. And uh, yeah, so it just gives you a chance to see some diversity here. That's another Austin Blige piece. Uh, this is a part, a part of your door series? Yeah, door series. And this actual lighting fixture was uh, existed in a fire I had in 2008 when well, this entire home was destroyed except for this wall and the joining wall on the opposite side. So this actually was a functioning light fixture, the Sputnik from the 1950s. Kind of like the one hanging in the other. Exactly like the one hanging in the other. Now these rooms are almost like little mini galleries. Right. I treat them that way. Mm -hmm. Here's your African comb. This is a ceiling tile which is very popular from the turn of the century. Okay. As well as this. These ceiling tiles come from New York. This is the African door. This a second part of that one there. And uh, here's an example of one of the rugs I'm doing. I collect lighting, as you know. This is a, uh, an acrylic and rattan circa 1970. This is an actual fire door, a real fire door that I use as a table. Mm -hmm. So I like texture. So that's what it's really about. This is my mother and father's leather sofa that came from their home. They passed about four years ago, so I really love that sofa. So this table's been, this, this door has been re, reimagined. Well, no, I should put on, put on a base, that's all. Mm -hmm. It wasn't all that. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> you heard it? It wasn't all that. And then this is one of my favorite pieces. This is my grandfather's right here, a Hammond B3 organ. And uh, although I don't play the organ, I play a little saxophone, but I remember as a child sitting on this, sitting, at, I have a bench too, sitting next to him. He was a self-taught musician, uh, 
cabinet maker, electrician, chauffeur, pool player. He taught himself to read in a room full of National Geographics. Uh, and electrician, I might mention that already, cabinet refinisher. He collected cars too. So what does it say about your family? I know you, you were, we were speaking earlier, you were talking about your aunt and how she taught you how to make your own right. uh, rug installments. Right, 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 right. What does it say about your family, their natural creativity, the, the, the blessing that you all right, right, uh, right, right. have been bestowed? Uh, as far as my physical essence is a result of my family, uh, I, 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 I shudder to believe uh, uh, or actually fathom the fact that before the foundation of this earth, God selected this family. God selected you, selected you to be in this time and place. So I have an incredible reverence for God, the Son, Jesus Christ. Uh, the family is a, a full of creativity, just full of it. So I'm, I'm, a, I'm a current recipient. I have four daughters and a son, and they also carry the creativity. Do you them. feel like you're a custodian? Uh, I never looked at it though. You trying to put words in my mouth? What are you trying to do? As we close. <laughs> as, as we close, we see your signature yes. on this piece. Right, right, right. What goes into signing your name? When I put my name on something, it's something I'm proud of. This is a print of a, an original that I did uh, a while back for uh, Larry and Susan Colvin there in Chino Hills. And uh, the original was a little bit larger than this. And you gotta imagine thick oil paint. And uh, they wanted a saxophone player. I remember I, we wanted a saxophone player, but when I said, I didn't I want to say it was me, but that's actually me. So when I brought the piece, I told my daughter, don't tell them it's me. So we unveil, they go, oh, that's you. They saw, so who am I fooling? But the point is, when I sign it, something I feel, I feel it, you know. And uh, I, you know, this is another favorite piece of mine too. This is a Brunswick uh, nine-foot official pool table from the 1940s. I like the period 40s and 50s. Mm. And so I, I like soul and character, you know. I, I do. And I, 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 I thank you. It's an honor to have you all here. Take the time to come to my home. I really appreciate that. And you're getting a glimpse into a part of me. Your soul. Pardon me, yeah. And your character. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. My pleasure. All right. Thank you, Michael.